couple of weeks ago, the Beehive released an announcement regarding the new white baiting regulations that will come into force in time for the 2021 fishing season. We will check out these changes in this video, but first, a little background on the existing white baiting regulations in New Zealand. There are three separate regions in New Zealand which are all governed by slightly different rules. The west coast of the South Island, the Chatham Islands, and the rest of New Zealand. The Chatham Islands have the same rules as the rest of New Zealand, except that their season is at a different time of the year. This season hasn't been changed, so when I talk about the rest of New Zealand, that applies to the Chatham Islands as well. And just so I don't upset the hardcore Taranaki whitebaiters, when I mention the west coast, I'm talking about the west coast of the South Island, because they do have those different rules down there. Quite a few of the rule changes we'll talk about are about making the rest of New Zealand and the west coast more similar. The different parts of the new regulations will come into force in time for each of the next three fishing seasons. 2021 has the most changes, so I'll start with those, and then follow with the 2022 and 2023 season changes. And I just want to say that this video is about the upcoming changes to the whitebaiting rules. It's not about all the rules that govern whitebaiting. Just to be crystal clear, just because any particular rule that is already in place is not mentioned here, it doesn't mean that it has ceased to exist. So just be a wee bit careful about that. Let's begin by starting with the changes to where you can fish, and we'll start with the big and work down to the small. On a national level, there are two main changes that close areas to whitebaiting. These relate to Able Tasman and Fiordland. In Able Tasman, any waterways that flow into the sea where the national park boundary touches the shore will be closed to whitebaiting. This image is from the Dock GIS, so if you want to take a closer look at the national park boundary and what waterways are affected, I'll leave the link to the website in the description below. Further south in Fiordland, there has been a closed area in place for a number of decades that spans from Yates Point near Milford Sound in the north to Fusica Point at the entry of Preservation Inlet in the south. In the south, this closed area has been extended around to and now includes the Waitutu River on the south coast. For those of you that fish the Holyford River, you'll be pleased to know that the northern extent of the closed area has not been changed and remains at Yates Point. It's worth mentioning that on the west coast there are already a number of closed side streams and creeks on some of the main rivers. These all remain closed, However, there are no new closed areas established by the regulations on the west coast. So now that we've worked out which rivers we can fish on, pretty much all of them, there are a few things that have changed down on the river itself. The first thing is you can no longer fish as far up the river as you like. This is a new rule for the rest of New Zealand. It's already in place on the west coast, which means you will only be able to fish downstream of back pegs, or where there are no back pegs, only in areas that are affected by changes in water level due to tides. This means when the tide comes in, the water level rises. This means if your current favourite spot isn't impacted by the tide, you won't be able to fish there anymore. The Department of Conservation will phase in back pegs over the next year or two, starting with some of the more significant white baiting rivers, but not necessarily on all waterways. If you're wondering, these rule changes bring the rest of New Zealand into line with the existing rules on the west coast. Back pegs will make very clear where the upstream limit to fishing is. The second thing is you will no longer be able to fish within 20 metres of any weirs, groins or illegal diversions. For those wondering about groins, we're just talking about the rockworks that stick out into a river, not the rock walls that run along the edge of a river to stop riverbank erosion or floodwater flowing into nearby land. So everybody that fishes the Greymouth flood wall, you're still good to go. You might ask what illegal diversion means. It means using anything that can be used to divert white bait into your net that is not allowed by the regulations. And the only thing that's now allowed by the regulations to divert white bait into your net are screens. If you're used to building up a bit of a stone bank to reach out from the water's edge to your screens and nets, that won't be allowed. In my opinion, one of the major changes that we'll see this season is a new rule that applies if you're fishing with set fishing gear. Think set nets and sock nets. You will no longer be able to fish closer than 20 metres to someone else that is also fishing with set fishing gear. Now there are a couple of things to note with this one. Firstly, this rule doesn't apply to stands. Secondly, as scoop nets and drag nets are not considered to be set fishing gear, it doesn't apply to them either. That means if you're fishing with a scoop net or a drag net, not only can you fish closer than 20 metres to another scoop netter or drag netter, you can also fish closer than 20 metres to someone fishing with set fishing gear. In addition, two people with set fishing gear can set up their gear 39 metres apart and no one else with set fishing gear can fish in between them because they can't meet that required 20 metre spacing. I think this is going to be one of the rule changes that makes for some really interesting times down on the rivers this year. So that's the where, now let's talk about the gear. One of the other big changes for 2021 relates to the width of your fishing gear outside of the west coast. Currently for the rest of New Zealand it is set at a maximum of 6 metres total width, which includes both your net and your screens. This is going to reduce down to 3 metres for the screens, not including the width of the net. Now, this does not apply to stands. If you're fishing a stand outside of the west coast, the current maximum total fishing gear width of 6 metres will still apply. 
this is unchanged. And as I mentioned earlier, screens are now the only legal way to divert white bait into your net. Now there are two other gear changes as well. The first relates to the number of nets you can fish on stands outside of the west coast. This is being reduced to one net only per stand. The second change relates to the proportion of a channel that you're allowed to fish. The old regulations allowed for fishing at most one third of the width of a channel. The new regulations reduce that to at most one quarter of a channel. This brings the whitebait regulations in line with other Fishery Act regulations. So that's the changes for the 2021 season. Just to recap, the big ones are only use screens to divert whitebait into your net, don't fish your set net closer than 20 metres to your neighbour's set net, and you can only use three metres worth of screens unless you are fishing from a stand. There is only one additional change coming into effect for the 2022 season, and it's a big one. In fact, for a scoop netter like me, it's definitely the biggest change that these regulations are bringing in, and it has to do with the length of the season. Now please just note that what I'm about to say does not apply to the Chatham Islands. As I mentioned earlier, they have their own season dates which are not affected by the new regulations. Currently the white baiting season on the west coast runs from 1 September through to 14 November, just under 11 weeks. For the rest of New Zealand, it runs from 15 August through to 30 November, just over 15 weeks. Starting with the 2022 season, the season will start everywhere on 1 September and finish everywhere on 30 October. That means that the season will be just under 9 weeks in length for everyone. So if anyone loves white baiting in August or November, which in my experience are not generally the greatest, then get out in the river this year as it's going to be your last chance to do so. And just be careful with that closing date. It's not the last day of October, which is the 31st. It's the 30th of October. There is also only one change for 2023, and that relates to putting in place a nationwide 6 metre width limit on fishing gear. Given that people not fishing on a stand will already be restricted to a maximum of 3 metres of screens plus their net, and that people fishing from stands in the rest of New Zealand are already restricted to 6 metres of fishing gear, this one is aimed squarely at the big stands on the west coast. With some of those stands being 20 metres plus wide, from 2023, the fishing gear that they carry will all need to be reduced down to 6 metres in width, including the net. So as you can see, there are going to be meaningful restrictions put in place, with some types of fishing impacted more than others. It's worth noting that there's also going to be a lot better alignment between the regulations applying to the west coast and the rest of New Zealand than there has been previously. Now you could be a bit grumpy about these changes, however bear in mind that many potential changes have not been adopted, in no particular order. Apart from the areas mentioned in Abel Tasman and Southern Fieldland, no rivers have been closed. There's going to be no one-off or rolling closed seasons across the country, or even regionally. No particular method of fishing has been banned. There's no ban on traps and nets. There's no ban on screens, but there are the restrictions that I've talked about. There's no change to the size of the mouths of whitebait nets or their lengths. The hours of fishing are unchanged. It's still free. You don't need a license. There's no fishing ballot to fish a particular river at particular times. You don't need to fill in a catch diary or otherwise report your catch. You don't need to put your name on your net. And there's going to be no fishing quota or catch limits. Okay, so what's next? It will take around four to six weeks for the new regulations to be gazetted through Parliament, at which time you'll be able to read them and all the nitty gritty they contain. Meanwhile, the Department of Conservation has been asked to, and let me quote this, Gather more evidence about the state of the whitebait fishery, including further monitoring, scientific assessment and economic analysis. Better information is essential to ensure that the whitebait management program is effective and any need for further changes to the program or regulations are identified. What's that mean? Doc's going to do more work, talk to more whitebaiters and there could be more regulation changes coming at some point. Just before I wrap up, I'd like to say thanks to Neil from Doc and Wellington for taking the time to walk me through these changes in detail. Thanks Neil. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button, it costs you absolutely nothing. If you want to see more videos like this, including us doing some actual white baiting during the season, and we've got some interesting trips planned, hit the subscribe button, along with that bell thing. It'll let you know when the next video is posted. Anyway, good luck with the season ahead, and we might see you down at the river. Yeah, that could be worth knowing.